Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Hello, and uh, thanks uh, for being here tonight. It's the last uh, talk of the day, so you can uh, just uh, chill out, relax, and talk about uh, dead bodies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not uh, as sexy as the previous um, uh, talk, but um, okay. First, nothing to do with Halloween that is coming, but it's uh, it's a serious talk about. Uh, uh, facial reconstruction. So facial reconstruction is uh, uh, is working on the skull in order to try to reconstruct the face of the deceased. And uh, this is what we are going to talk about. So um, first, some disclaimer. Um, it's a kind of complex uh, process, so I may have to simplify uh, things especially because uh, my mouth is not able to, to speak in English this very complex, uh, complex word. So, for example, when I, I have to say uh, soft uh, tissue death, I may just say flesh. Is it okay for you? Yeah, thank you. Okay, it's still a work in progress. My, my job is to make this, uh, to speed up the, the process of uh, uh, making a face. And uh, so it's still a work in progress, uh, and I, I will try to present you five of uh, different tools I, I made for this. Um, I, had to, uh, I have to uh, advise you that there is one uh, graphic slide with real blood on it. So I, I will tell you, so if you don't want to see, just close your eyes. If you want to throw up, just <laughs> keep your dignity and don't do it. <laughs> And uh, okay, this uh, this subject may change your life, as it changed mine, and uh, not in a good way. Um, <laughs> you you may become uh, sad and creepy, as I am, because when I actually I, I talk with a lot of you uh, guys uh, today, and I know it's rude, but the the only thing I had in mind is uh, to reverse engineering your face in order to. See your skull. <laughs> okay, uh, I have to, to show you some some real and beautiful facial reconstruction. I, I uh, had the luck to meet with um, uh, Elizabeth Daines, which is one of the most um, famous uh, facial reconstruction artists. Actually, she's a paleo artist, and she makes this. Um, Reconstruction, it's like a life size uh, statue made of silicone, I guess. And it's just incredible. And when you visit her workshop, it's full of bodies, full of skulls. It's, uh, it's really funny. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I have another one to show you. Oh, no, but, okay. Yeah. This is a facial reconstruction of um, a celebrity. Maybe you. you I think it's obvious. Who is it? The Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah, uh, just okay to introduce the fact that um, the facial reconstruction is uh, very controversial. Uh, why? Because it's not a science; it's made of science. But uh, there is um, what scientists give to the artist and what the artists actually do. And uh, one of my, uh, my mission is to reduce the parts, uh, the artistic parts, and to increase the scientific one. I know it doesn't sound sounds good, but <laughs> my, what I do. Okay, how many of you uh, have, have uh, ever read a, on a newspaper, like uh, uh, facial reconstruction, scientists found the face of uh, any kind of king of, raise your hand. Okay, I'm sorry, you shouldn't, shouldn't have read that. Because it's not what we do. As journalists, we know they, they try to make things sexy and simple. But uh, we don't find the face of someone. We find one of the possible face that a skull can uh, wear, if it's, uh, I don't know, wear. And um, yeah, so, so when we do facial reconstruction and when we speak about um, we have to keep being very humble. That's one of the key. And that's why um, um, 
facial reconstruction is not uh, recognized in a court of law, for example. Okay, so I'm working uh, at the Sergi Pontoise University, which is very, very uh, famous in Sergi Pontoise, I mean. And um, so I am in charge of um, a degree of students working uh, with Blender to make uh, image and animations for science. And um, I'm also doing some research about facial reconstruction. And this year, by chance, a group of archaeologists asked us to uh, make the face of two people. And we are going to talk about uh, this later. So the classes look like this. So it's very fresh. And then we, we go to eat and forget to clean the hands. It's terrible. A lot of disease around. And uh, this is one of the archaeologists we are working uh, for and with. So what is uh, facial reconstruction about? Um, okay, it's, we, we try to remake the face of a disease to be as close as possible as uh, the face was. And we are using, of course, the skull, because the skull is the beginning of everything. And we are also using some other sources of uh, scientific information, like uh, anthropology, archaeology, um, pathology, genetic, etc., etc. But as my job is to speed up the process, I have to focus on what is important in a face. And there is a study that points out all the uh, discriminant features of the face, including the ear. <laughs> really? Who cares about the ear? OK. Uh, so there is three features um, for the eyes, uh, three for the lips, and which is much more important, seven for the nose, seven out of 22. So the nose is the most discriminant feature on your face. And if, for example, I change your nose or I, I have your nose wrong, well, nobody will recognize you. Nobody. It's so discriminant. That's why I changed the nose of these two celebrities, and it's impossible for you to, to know who they actually are. Don't try. Just bear with me. It's impossible. And ta-da! I made my point. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so what, what can we have? What can we find uh, on, on the skull? We need a lot of information to make, to make a face, right? And uh, there's a lot of um, things that um, we will find on this skull. Do you know, for example, you can raise your hand uh, after the question. Uh, do you know, for example, that uh, we, we, we know the, your gender with your skull? Raise your hand. Even if you don't believe it, I feel better about myself. Well, actually, it was a tricky question, and almost nobody um, raised the hand. So, um, in fact, now it's not really working. There is a lot of... Um, a lot of indications, a lot of hints, but um, by themselves, it's not enough to uh, make a, a good pronostic. But at least they uh, tell us if you are uh, the kind of robust person, so like uh, American actors, or a uh, gracile person, like French actors, <laughs> and Woody Allen. <laughs> And so there is a lot of them. Uh, let's try, okay, don't be shy, please. Uh, I, I, you will have to touch the, the person just in front of you. We'll, we'll try to, okay, we we'll just try to find this little bump here at the back of the head on the knuckle crest. It, it's called the um, occipital protuberance. And okay, touch it. Maybe some of you have a big one. You can proudly raise your hand. <laughs> so you are very robust. Yeah, it's good. Maybe, maybe some of you don't have anything. It's, it's good also. <laughs> you can also touch some others to see the difference. 
Okay, now let's talk about the mastoid process. The mastoid process is just behind you here. It's a, like a rock, like, or like a um, reverse pyramid. You know, just touch it, feel it. Okay, same, if it's big, American actors. Otherwise, uh, it's French. Okay, good. So the mastoid process is here, and this is, but there is no, nothing. Okay, uh, oh, okay, another one. This one, I like it because it's dangerous and painful. So grab the person in front of you and try to, to put your finger between the orbit and the eyeball <laughs> and feel, and feel the bone. If it's rounded, that's robust. If it's thin and uh, sharp, mm, that's gracile. Either way, you're a good person. Okay. Uh, so, I have a face to make. I have a face to make, and well, I have this in my hands. So, let's try to um, have the eyes right. So, to attach the muscle of the, the eye, we have um, one little uh, hole here that is called the lacrimal canal or the lacrimal fossa, it's here. And on the other side, you have the Whitnall's tubercle. It's just a little dense, a little bump here on the side. And this gives you the inclination of the eye, but also the deepness of the eye inside the orbit. So it's a good information. And uh, we have some other information here uh, that will talk about the, the eyelid. OK, let's talk about the mouth now. Uh, We'll try also. We'll try on you. Um, okay, we we have this line, the the midline uh, where the lips meet in the oh, sorry, in the middle of the mouth. Okay, and this should happen at the level of um, at this level. One third of your teeth, front teeth, incisive, incisor. Yeah, just try. Put your finger here and raise your hand if I'm uh, right. Oh, yes, thank you. Bear with me until the end. Okay, now the upper lip should arrive at this level and on the downside at this level. Feel it with your finger. Okay, try your neighbor. And I, I'm sure I'm right, I don't even ask. Okay, and the philtrum is here in the, in the middle of the mouth and should happen in the middle of the two incisors. Here and here. And of course, we, we all have different mouths, right? So regarding the inclination of the, the, the mandible, we will guess if uh, you have uh, strong lips and the shapes and everything. So it, it's, it could be com complicated. But whew, still, we are all very overwhelmed about this. So let's talk about the nose. Mm. The nose is very, very difficult uh, to predict. Why? Because um, first, it can be big. I know what I'm talking about. And it's only 20% uh, of bone. And all the rest is uh, muscles and um, I don't know the word in English. Uh, it should be cartilage. cartilage? Cartilage. Okay, thank you. But we do have some information. Actually, if you look uh, this way, you can already see the nostril here that goes up and define the side of the nose. Actually, well, everything belongs to the same blueprint, so it's, there is a logic in the nose. The only thing that remains uncertain is the tip of the nose. That's the most difficult. Let's talk about it later. The next slide uh, is graphic and disgusting, but I have to show it. First, uh, why the nose, the tip of the nose is so unpredictable? Because of this. This is a cartilage, the alar cartilage, and it's unpredictable. It can be big, little, and if you cut uh, only one millimeter, you, the shape of your nose is completely different. And this, we don't have any information on it. So, um, Sircher found a lot of different um, equations, 
in order to predict the nose. This is an equation that predicts the projection of the nose, the, the size of your nose. But this is compli uh, complex, so I have something much more easy to memorize. It has been found uh, last year by um, a Brazilian team. So here we have on the bone the rhinion, the rhinion here, at the top of the nasal bone. And here we have the prostion, just at the beginning of the teeth. And look, I don't know how to explain, so just look. And 90 degrees. And you have the nasal projection. 92 degrees for women. OK, so how do we do? It's very easy. Um, very easy, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> and it's long and painful. So you have a bone, and you will put 50 markers on, on, the, on the skull, 50 markers all around. And that will give you this, the flesh, the, the deepness of the, the thickness of the flesh on the bone. And once you have done this, you will, piece by piece, add all the muscles and cartilage. And after two days of work, or two weeks, depends, you have the face, even without the skin, you can see the face of the person. And, uh, OK, the markers. <clears throat> OK, the markers I'm talking about. Um, let's say you, OK, you take, um, in a population, let's say, I don't know, uh, Switzerland, you take 100 person uh, male, 20 years old, 100 person male, uh, 30 years old, 100 person male, 40 years old. Okay, and you make measurements on the flesh. And then you do the same with women. And then you can add some criteria like uh, the, 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 body, the body fat, for example, uh, if the person is strong or not. And then you put everything in charts. And this is uh, what I pretend to work on. And then you put the marker on the skull, and the marker gives you three information. The mean value, to the average, and the two extreme, uh, minimum and maximum. And for example, if you know that, okay, you are working with a scientist, anthropologist, for example, and he, he tells you this person is robust. Okay, so uh, at, the, at some area, you, you will go maybe higher to, uh, from, the main, from the mean value, because he has a well, strong jaw, and I don't know. Once you have done that, well, you can take the grease pencil and begin to draw the face of the person. So it's very fast, very easy. And uh, once, you, uh, once you, you have done that, well, you, you know the, which face you are working on. Makes things much more easy. And uh, it looks nice for the presentation also. Yeah, I told you that I, I have 60 slides <laughs> for 20 minutes, so, I, okay. It'll be a one-hour presentation. <laughs> Thanks for your understanding. Okay, so one of the first thing I did with uh, Blender is just to put all the charts online on the same database and make Blender uh, connect to the database and adjust dynamically all the markers. So here I can ch uh, choose a male in his 20s, et cetera, et cetera. OK, that's the first tool. Uh, the second one is a generic uh, facial mesh, so it's a mask, but with a rig. So it can deform itself and be wrapped to, uh, in order to, to make any kind of face we want. So this is a boring and uh, no charm, no personality whatsoever, for obvious reason, but with strong facial features like the nose, etc. And this face should be able to uh, be shaped in any kind of face. First thing, there is three key, sh um, uh, key sh uh, shape keys. Sorry, uh, in order to align with the skull, the uh, orbits, and the, and the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And uh, once this is done, we can begin to uh, deform the face. So there is uh, only a few bones, actually. 
but the topology is uh, done by the book. This is very important because we are not doing muscle by muscle. So the topology plays this role. When I move uh, a bone, the, f the flesh is driven, driven on the, on the face. Um, okay, well, that's boring. Let's try to push um, some extreme faces out of this mesh. Okay, so, so at least, well, maybe you, you, you will never do facial reconstruction, but maybe you can use it to, I don't know, character design, or you can go crazy. <laughs> so it takes one minute to do the face and three hours to do the drool. Okay, now I have these tools. Uh, I can, uh, oh, I just have one minute left, really? Oh my God. So, okay, I drive test all these tools and get this face. This face belongs, well, is one of the f possible face of this skull. Okay. Um, interesting things when we uh, change the charts. So this is a woman chart, and uh, this is a man chart. So we don't stock the, 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 the fat on the same area on the face. Okay, let's move on. And then the nose machine. It's complex, I, I said that already. So I made something uh, that built the nose for us. We are moving some little objects on the skull that give information, and then Blender will produce the uh, uh, nose accordingly. So here I move in real time all these markers, and the nose is changing like that. OK, and uh, I should tell you a very uh, long story uh, I call it the tale of Lauren and the bicycle. Lauren is one of my students, but I will make the story much more shorter. Okay, Lauren, um, in the summer, uh, she was drunk and she drove a bicycle. And long story short, well, she, she fell and broke a jaw in three pieces. Very, piece, very painful blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she got a CT scan. And that for us is the Christmas gift. The CT scan. The CT scan can produce um, a 3D object of the skull, but also of the face, of everything we like. This is the object. And when we export it into Blender, we have separately the bones and the face. So uh, we can work um, and make some experimentation, which leads, leads us to this one. Nobody ever seen this experimentation. You will see, you, you won't sleep. It's so good. Okay, um, here is um, how can, can we call it? Um, a distance map. The distance on the skin from the skull. If it makes sense, yeah. Hmm? I guess, yeah. So this is the skull of Lauren. So I take the, the skin of Lauren. I, I put it onto someone else's uh, skull, and I wrap it with the shrink wrap modifier. And then I use this map to decrease the influence of the shrink wrap. And this gave us uh, the face of this person if this person had the flesh of Lorraine. See? OK. So let's try with something that makes more sense. Let's try with a Neanderthal. OK, this is with a little bit of cleaning. OK, I add the nose with the machine and some eyes and stuff. And now with the Neanderthal. So this is not uh, Homo sapiens, it's uh, Neanderthal. And this is Loren. I have to align, of course, the features. And in a few seconds, you will see the face of Neanderthal like you've never seen it. Can you feel it? Mm. Okay. And uh, I couldn't resist, and I, I go crazy with the skull tools. And uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I was drunk and riding a bicycle. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was about to 
speak about the materials, but I won't do it because we don't have time. Hand painted and procedural and smurf. That was a good joke. <laughs> okay. And then the two missions of the archaeologist. So um, one day, the archaeologist knocked my door with a box and a big smile on his face. And inside the box was the head of this person. It's a, 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 man from, a man from the medieval ages. And with uh, some information here. So he's robust. See? Features. And um, the, the head was still uh, with all the mud. And the archaeologist explained to me, if I clean up the mud, the skull will fall apart. And it will be like a puzzle. So don't do it. Don't touch as the mud. Uh, uh, as the mud. Just scan it as it and try to do the face. So this is a 3D scan. And so I spent a full night trying to recompose pieces by pieces all the skull. Thankfully, it's uh, symmetrical. <laughs> And with this skull, I did the face of this medieval man. Well, it's just a draft because the archaeologist uh, told me, ah, actually, when he died, he didn't have any teeth, so I have to change the face. But it's funny. And another day, the archaeologist come back to, to me, knock the door with a big box and a big smile on his face. The, the smile was different. We are talking about a woman that is 6,500 years old. And the archaeologist uh, says, this time I cleaned the, the bones perfectly. What? <laughs> the box was okay, full of pieces, and it's like a puzzle that will take at least a year to recompose. So see you next year. Thank you very much. Thank you.